Hey guys, welcome back to the greenhouse. Today, I wanted to come on and talk to you guys a little bit about pest prevention and treatment. You may have a brand new list of wish list plants for 2021, which is awesome. I'm already working on mine too, but the more plants we add to our collection, the more um, care is involved, right? So you have to get a little bit creative with um, how you want to care for your plants when you get to that point where you have 50, 100, two, 300, right? So what I'm showing you today is over the past couple of years, what I found to be the cheapest, the easiest, and the most effective of the pest prevention and treatment methods that I have tried. Before we get started, I'll just mention really quickly, um, took a couple weeks off over the holidays, had a little accident, had some stitches in my the inside of my lip and so I'm super self-conscious about like this part of my mouth and I don't know if it'll go back to normal it's been it's been a couple weeks now it should have healed all the way but kind of looks like I'm doing dip if I am not I could promise you that but there's just some sometimes when I speak I notice I kind of like protect it a little bit and so if that's distracting you I'm really sorry and I promise there's not dip in my mouth Okay, anyway, so the first thing I'll talk about, um, because it's kind of mutually exclusive from everything else in this video, uh, is beneficial insects. So beneficial insects are like praying mantises, green lacewings, ladybugs. I have only tried praying mantises and I've only tried ladybugs. So those two are the only two that I've had personally, particularly ladybugs are really, really good at taking care of spider mites. And what I've read is that the praying mantises are really, really good at taking care of mealybugs. What I have done in the past is in the summer, I will introduce uh, ladybugs or mantises or both. I haven't noticed that they harm each other in any way or that they like compete for the same food or anything so i don't think it's a problem to have both um so i'll introduce them in the summer or in the spring when it's warmer i usually keep the windows open some and so they just kind of leave as they leave right like um if there's enough food here for them they will stay and i've had them stick around for a month or so at a time and then they just kind of take off you know and then once i notice that they're all gone when it starts getting cooler outside, I will start to employ some of the other methods that I'll talk about today. But I would not use them at the same time because obviously some of the things that I'm going to speak about are indiscriminate. So they don't apply only to pest insects and they would kill any beneficial insects that I would introduce. I'm going to go the beneficial insect route. It is so fun. First of all, I would say it is so, so fun. It is super worth it. Um, but you have to have an enclosed area that's for plants, right? Um, I doubt that many people are cool with being in their living room or in their dining room eating dinner and, you know, ladybugs are flying around. Like, there's quite a bit of them. So um, just be prepared to have a space for them to inhabit that's not going to end up being like a bother to you. I'm going to be kind of demonstrating what I like to work with on this little guy. This is a cutlass aglionema. I love, I don't know exactly which species it is, but I love this plant. Um, I have a thing for like the skinny aglionemas. I don't know why. And they're so hard to kill, which is of course really nice. Okay, so this is a plant I got at a nursery a few months ago. It's been a little while, um, but I've not treated it with anything in any way. I haven't noticed any gnats or anything, but I have also let this plant dry out a lot. So let's talk about gnats first because it's the one that I hear the most about or people asking the most about, like how can I control these gnats in my house? They're very, very annoying. I have had gnats on and off the past couple of years. I haven't seen one in a really long time, but I will say it took me a long time to kind of figure out exactly what works and it's a combination of things. So for gnats, don't over water. That's your number one source of gnat infestations is soil that's kept too moist. They love moist soil. We call them fungus gnats because they feed on a particular fungus that lives in the soil um, when it's moist. I'm gonna prevent that 
fungus from growing. And to do that, you need to uh, let the, the plant dry out in between watering. And most houseplants are gonna appreciate that anyway. Um, it also prevents root rot to keep your plants a little bit on the drier side. Houseplants don't need as much water as you might think. And most houseplants, especially ones with these kind of thinner leaves, so not succulents, um, I don't do succulents, but um, philodendrons, you know, like your typical aeroidy houseplants are gonna show you that they need water by kind of drooping a little bit. So when I notice that this plant, like the leaves just look sad, that's when I'll water it and I really won't water it any time before that. Let's say you got this from a nursery, brought it home and already had gnats and maybe you didn't realize it. Um, maybe you did and you thought, you know what? I really want this plant. So I'm just gonna take care of those gnats on my own so I can have the plant. And that is something I've done before too. Um, no shame. Uh, a couple things I would recommend. I love things that um, serve two purposes, but hydrogen peroxide, oh, such a good friend. What it's doing is introducing more oxygen to the soil. And when we get more oxygen in our soil, we get less fungus, which means less gnats and less rot, which is nice too. It is already diluted to 3%. Most uh, hydrogen peroxide you're going to find on a store shelf is already diluted to 3%. So don't be too worried about like overdoing it with your plant. However, I will say when you do use it, dilute it. I usually go like, oh, let's say the gallon jug was full to here. So almost full. Okay. And I'd fill the rest with hydrogen peroxide. So just, just about this, this much, right? In my gallon jug. Just a little bit, right? You don't need a lot, enough to kind of hear it like fizzing. The other thing you can do for gnats is more of a prevention and that is mosquito bits. I love mosquito bits. So a lot of folks will argue with me that this doesn't work. Um, the reason is it's more of a prevention than a treatment. It will work to treat a gnat infestation, but it will take one to two weeks to actually work. So if you are treating an infestation, I would suggest making sure that you're using this in conjunction with something like the hydrogen peroxide or um, a soapy spray. So I will just use about a palm size amount for any like three to six inch pot. You just want enough to cover the soil. You don't need like layers of it on top of itself, but you do need good contact all the way around the pot. That's because this stuff is going to release what's called BTI, and that kills uh, the fungus in the soil. So something you can do in conjunction with the mosquito bits to treat gnats is soapy water. So I use dish soap. The reason I use dish soap is because it is made to break up oils, okay, and so it's pretty viscous it's pretty concentrated it's thick right and that's what you want because if i add just a little bit to a spray bottle just full of water so just like not even enough to change the water level right just a little bit this method works because it is even when it's dissolved in water, viscous enough to cause their little wings to stick together. Remember that the fungus gnats live in the soil of the plant. They don't actually live on your plant or in your plant. So you're gonna wanna make really good contact with the soil uh, with your soapy water if you're trying to treat gnats. And you can do that pretty much daily because you're not adding enough water to really um, moisten the whole pot of soil. You're just getting that top layer you're just hitting that with the soap. Okay, let's talk for a moment about spider mites. I hate spider mites. I hate spider mites so much because it always seems like you never catch them until they have completely taken over and it's an infestation kind of like all of a sudden. When I find spider mites on a plant, it's usually because I am wiping down the leaves or like taking the time to actually inspect my plant. So prevention for spider mites the number one thing is going to be inspecting your plants, looking at them closely. One way that I find this to be like knocking out 
two chores in one is not to go around and just look at my plants as much as I love to. I have a lot of plants, like a lot of you, and I don't wanna look at every single leaf of every plant with a microscope, right? So what you can do that kind of like treats them if they're there and allows you to find them if they're there is to clean your leaves fairly regularly. And when I say regularly, I mean like once a month, maybe. If it's a warmer time of year, I would say a little more frequently because your plants will dry out quicker in the warmth and dry leaves with dust or any kind of um, you know particles that have settled on the leaves are a magnet for spider mites. And I don't recommend spraying leaves down. Please don't spray your leaves with water and just leave it there. Um, that's kind of a bit of a houseplant myth. It will help to increase humidity for maybe a couple of hours while that water evaporates. But what happens when your plants are indoors and the water doesn't evaporate very quickly is the water will sit on your leaves and cause fungus and issues that you just don't want. Please don't spray your plants with water and leave it. But if you want to spray your plants with water, um, particularly soapy water, if you do suspect spider mites, that will, uh, just the same way it does with gnats, it will kind of catch them in that viscous solution and when you wipe it off, it will take the spider mites with it, right? So you want to just make it a common practice to spray your leaves down and wipe them off and it's really good for your plants to keep their leaves really clean. Think about these tropical plants in the rainforest. They are getting washed off pretty regularly. Um, I like to use either soapy water or distilled vinegar. And that's just the same vinegar that I use to clean like my bathtub or my countertops. It works really well to prevent hard water spots. And if I'm using the vinegar, I'll just use um, usually a 10% solution mixed into water. Last up for this video is going to be mealybugs. Now mealybugs are super, super annoying because they hide really, really well. If any of my plants have particular like nooks and crannies or where they emerge, maybe these um, more like self-heading um, growth habits, they form these little pockets where the leaves emerge, that's where mealybugs are going to hang out. So if you suspect that your plant has mealybugs, you have to really make sure that you're checking deep in every little spot. The first thing you want to check is the underneaths of each leaf. Make sure you're checking every single leaf because you will find, especially in the beginning parts of an infestation, that they'll only be on a few leaves. They might not have made it to every single leaf treating them. My favorite way to treat mealybugs is with alcohol, rubbing alcohol and a q-tip. They will die on contact with rubbing alcohol. Rubbing alcohol is very dehydrating though so we don't want to go spraying it on our plants like we would with soapy water or the distilled vinegar. What you can do though is dip a q-tip in rubbing alcohol and then just inspect your plant and as you find the mealies you're just going to touch it with the q-tip and they will um, turn kind of like a rusty orange color and you know that they are dead at that point and then you can just wipe off their little carcasses. The adult male mealybugs can fly so just like with any other pest you want to make sure you are quarantining mealybugs from the rest of your collection a lot of folks think that they are just crawlers. They are not, they can fly. So make sure that you're keeping that plant away from your other plants until the infestation has um, been taken care of. Last but not least, let's talk about some chemicals. Some of us are just like done with it and we don't want anything to do with kind of um, like milder methods. We're ready to just bomb the place. That's fine too. I will talk a little bit about systemics, but I am out of my favorite one. So there are two from Bonide, 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 I don't know, but they look really, really, really similar. One of them works and one of them straight up doesn't. Like one is effective and one does nothing in my experience. This is the one that works. Systemic means it works through um, penetrating the, the entire plant system. So it needs to be taken up by the roots in order to penetrate the plant. The plant 
um, takes it up just like it would water. And so it's going to spread throughout the plant and anything like spider mites that would feed on the leaves or um, the sap in the stems, those are those insects are going to be um, ingesting the systemic as well. And so that's why it's so effective, but it's also why it takes a little bit of time. I have tried this one called infuse it's really designed more for gardens roses flowers lawns trees and shrubs but when i looked at what it stops of course they include an entire book on the back of the bottle it's supposed to take care of um like mildew and diseases too so i thought okay you know what let me try that and i tried it on just my kind of like more common plants because I was a little worried about how intense it might be. And I'll just show you on my um, Monstera adansonii. This is what's been happening ever since. So you'll notice there's some yellowing. It looks like fertilizer burn, but yeah, it's, um, I've already dug it up and looked at the roots. The roots look good. But the new growth, ever since I treated it with the infuse, has come out a little crispy. So I'm not positive. It could be, you know, a shift in weather. We've gotten a little colder. I use my heater now. It could be something like that. Um, but it does seem to be related because none of my other plants are doing this. And I've tried fungicide. It doesn't seem to be a fungus. Um, like I said, the roots look good. So maybe the... Um, Maybe the infuse is a little much for houseplants. Unfortunately, if you have houseplants, you will more than likely experience pests at some point. Um, doesn't mean it has to be the end of your collection though. There's lots of simple ways to take care of it. So I hope that this video was helpful for you. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and I will be sure to respond to every single one. Bye guys.